WBBOR, Black Box, Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia, Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Okay, so we're going to be doing something a little bit different today. We're going to be talking all about King Diamond, the Danish musician, as well as some connections to the world of Satanism. Earlier this year, I mentioned a few times on the channel that I was reading the book Lords of Chaos, which is all about the satanic metal underground, particularly in the Nordic world, which would include Denmark. But they talk a lot about Sweden and Norway, more so than the other countries of like their Nordic neighbors and such. And the thing that stood out to me in that one is, I'm following along with the book, and they mentioned a band named Merciful Fate. And then it took me a second. I was like, wait, wait, I know that name, right? But... Of course, the band where King Diamond was the uh, front man for. And I was like, 15 years ago, I knew that stuff inside and out. You know, metal bands could tell you who's playing in what band, name the songs. It really is crazy how sometimes information can just fall out. And it took me a while to remember the name Merciful Fate. But King Diamond is perhaps even more famous for being a um, musician under his own name. If I remember, though, from once, I, as I said, going to way back when, King Diamond is the name of both the band and the lead singer. Some musical acts are like that. If I, re if I remember, Marilyn Manson is also the name of the band and the singer. It's not unheard of. But as they, they were talking about King Diamond because, very famously, he is somebody who is satanic, and he even says satanic as a philosophy sometimes. He's very articulate on the issues, and I definitely like looking up some things about him from time to time. And ever since I was reading that book, Lords of Chaos, which we have some uploads about here on the channel, Black Box Online Radio, I would invite anyone to check them out. I would say that King Diamond is one of the, my favorite people to listen to. Perhaps the absolute favorite musician that I like hearing from is Greg Slick, the uh, singer from Jefferson Airplane. And she had, um, we have we have an upload here on this channel about the crimes of Grace Slick, but sadly, because I was playing some of her musical clips, the copyright censors came in and it's not available to the American audience, but that is available as well. So the thing with King Diamond is he became a practitioner of Levian Satanism. L-A-V-E-Y-A-N, and named after Anton LaVey. And Anton LaVey is no stranger to this channel because he's somebody who has come up not only because of the things we've talked about with Charles Manson, but also the things that we've talked about with the Zodiac Killer even, particularly when we did the book discussion on Earl Van Best, The Most Dangerous Animal of All. Anton LaVey was somebody who rose to prominence in the 1960s in California because of the Church of Satan. and if I understand the narrative, it goes that people were looking for a particular alternative. They wanted to hear something that was a response to the hippie movement, flower power. They thought that these people were talking about peace, love, and joy, but they viewed it as purely hypocritical. They're like, this is just selfishness, materialism. This is just superficial. There's no depth to this. And the the alternative was they created a counterculture to the 1960s counterculture, just like that. And that became the Church of Satan, or one of the reasons why Anton LaVey's satanic message really took shape. And, I mean, we could talk for ages about possible satanic connections to Charles Manson and the Manson family, as well as perhaps occult symbols and the Zodiac Killer. And, you know, we will from time to time have some more of those discussions. But to, to mention some things about King Diamond, the Danish musician, once again, also from Merciful Fate, as well as King Diamond. He has some things here on an article from culturacollectiva.com, just like that, Cultura Collectiva. And he gives some principles that he would follow in this satanic as a philosophy. And let's have a discussion. And I do mean discussion because let's challenge some of these things and go in all directions. Number one, like a principle from Anton LaVey, do not give your opinions or advice unless you are asked. And that's the quote, but then there's some more here. According to Anton LaVey's 11 principles in the Satanic Bible, a person must be aware of the fact that no one has the absolute truth of life. Okay, you know, when it comes to these types of ideas, do not give your opinions or advice unless you are asked. We've been talking about cult leaders on this channel for a long time, and it is a very frequent tactic that is used by cult leaders. First, they're trying to discredit people, 
they describe all the other ways of thinking, and they say that you have to follow them to get the true answers in life. And one of the problems with that is they tell you, I do not want to be challenged. You will see this time and time again with various forms of cult leaders. Like, you have to accept that this person is the true messenger. And not only can you not learn anything else, it has to be centered around a person. That's what makes it a cult. It's not so much believing in a spiritual entity or believing in any type of spirit, period. It requires the following of following toward a particular human being. And I used to think that this stuff here, do not give your opinions or advice unless you are asked, is just um, just an attempt to control people, more or less. But I've also been reading the book Human Reality, which I talk about from time to time. And in that one, they explore this idea somewhat, and it says, do not give your opinions or advice unless you are asked. Almost the same thing is expressed in the book Human Reality. I don't know if they're connected to Anton LaVey and Satanism, but it's more about how discourse is good, discussing things is good, but at first, you acknowledge someone's right to individuality. Notice I said acknowledge, and we're not even talking about respect yet. We're not even talking about honor yet acknowledge someone's right to individuality because there's a particular line in that book human reality that says something very similar here when it says one of the mysteries of life is how do you contribute to the collective well-being while still honoring and respecting and acknowledging other people's right to individuality but i think the word acknowledge is very important it's like people have a right to be individuals and then other people have you know a uh, almost a duty to contribute to the collective well-being of a social group. Let's hear some things from King Diamond in his own words. Also, this is still from Col Cultura Collectiva. I was following this lifestyle even before reading Anton LaVey's Satanic Bible. Some people say you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't believe this, you can't believe that. Why not, as long as you don't hurt other people? Why can't you do certain things and maybe people, why can't you do certain things that some people might not consider normal? For me, the root of all evil comes from belief systems. Now, about um, this, I've also heard King Diamond say in a particular interview here on YouTube, it was a Danish language interview, but it had English subtitles. He said something that really stood out to me. He said, I don't care about people that I don't know personally. And I think that everyone needs to admit that. Most people live like that. And I'm starting to paraphrase a little bit, but what he said, but he did say something to that effect. He said that he doesn't care about people that he doesn't know personally, and he believes that most people are living their lives that way. Now, this is something that I think perhaps has a grain of truth in it, but maybe we can look at this from a different angle and say that there is a difference between helping a person as an individual and helping people as, a, as an entire whole, like the human race versus just a single human. And I definitely think that there is a certain sense of value in helping the collective well-being of just humanity in general versus a person-to-person -person series of actions because if, let's face it the vast majority of the time if you try to help a person no matter who they are they most likely won't appreciate it if you try to um, just do things for the overall betterment or the improvement of well-being in a society that could have some very powerful effects Let's go on in these principles that um, King Diamond wants to talk about. Do not tell your troubles to others unless you are sure they want to hear them. Well, that's a bold statement. And the quotation from King Diamond is, My friends believe in different things than me. I don't even know what they believe in all the time because I really don't care. They're good people. That's what matters to me. They respect me. I respect them. But there's too many out there who kill others because they don't believe in the same things. Why do we have to kill each other just because we believe in something different? It's a personal thing, so we should keep it a little bit more private. You know, it's exactly, I think that this is in line with the beginning. I mean, if we're going to try and find, you know, some form of goodness in this Anton LaVey principles of Satanism and such, it's that people have a right to individuality, and we also have a duty to try and contribute to the collective well-being, and let's try and achieve the balance in that. But as um, Anton LaVey talks about, I mean, as we talk about the name Anton LaVey, rather, 
one of the things that we encountered, even just during these um, discussions on Charles Manson that we have on the channel from time to time, is that Anton LaVey possibly didn't even want to be the head of the Church of Satan. Somebody was writing, and I don't remember where this is from or else I would cite the source, but what they're saying is Anton LaVey really wanted to be a musician, and he just wasn't good enough. He couldn't cut it in the world of music, but he still had that lust for glory. And a very similar story is told about Aleister Crowley, except instead of music, it's with literature. He wanted to be a literary great. So um, they went down this pathway. It was a way to achieve a certain sense of um, an epic nature, more or less. The next one here is acknowledge the power of magic if you have employed it successfully. King Diamond is somebody who uh, definitely believes in the paranormal. He definitely believes in some types of supernatural activities. And when you want to have these discussions on spirituality, I, def I definitely notice he seems to say a lot of things that are very anti-religion, but definitely very pro-paranormal. And King Diamond's quotation here is, I use the things that I see in my life, including the occult experiences, experiences which I change to fit the album stories talking about the musical albums, of course. One of the first things I saw was a glass floating in the air in my very own apartment, a very haunted apartment. Merciful Fate, his first band, had just recorded its demo, and we were sitting with Kim Ruz, my brother, and myself, waiting for the other guys to come out and listen to it. While talking, suddenly, my brother's glass rose two feet up in the air. None of us really believed it. We just looked at each other. It took a while before I said to them, I know you saw that, and they just nodded. You know, that's something that's um, very, um, very interesting, because normally in these types of events, people are recalling them. It's only one person that has had the experience. How would you um, explain that three or four people are having the same paranormal experience at the same time if, um, if you uh, actually are not there? I mean, like, you can't really give your first-hand account. That's a very simple thing, but, I mean, that could even be a challenge question. Have you ever had a paranormal experience like that where someone or something has, um, you know, like levitated like the way uh, King Diamond was just talking about the glass rising up and such or yeah, floating in the air more or less? But um, one of the um, other things about King Diamond is he does several things that are very ritualistic. I mean, first and foremost, putting on makeup and Maybe you'll remember him from a particular scandal that happened years ago when he was sued by Gene Simmons of KISS because uh, Simmons was claiming that King Diamond's makeup was way too similar. However, that was dismissed, if, if I remember, because um, but, I mean, you can see King Diamond in the photo, and perhaps you can Google a photo of Gene Simmons if you forget his makeup. I don't think they're similar, um, and... You know, like, what is that word? Malicious uh, malicious lawsuit or something like that. It's possible that that was just Gene Simmons being Gene Simmons. But um, some of the other rituals that, are, that were performed um, with King Diamond were that I didn't even know this until recently. But we're going to jump over to an, an article from Rolling Stone magazine that talks about one of the things that he would do. Not exactly in the ritual sense, but there's a big thing that I would like to say about this here. What was the most grotesque thing you used to do? Rolling Stone magazine asked King Diamond this. When I was in the band Black Rose, he says, I had a friend who worked at the butchery who would get me pig's heads, and I would tie them together. And he would also bring pig guts and pig blood, and I would fill that into a little plastic bag, and I would put it in the stomach of a big doll on stage, and I would stab it, and it looked so real, and I would stick my hand in and pull out the guts, from the stomach and throw them into the audience. It was completely gross. I wouldn't do that today. But when I said there's something that I wanted to talk about, it is that back when I was 14, I really began to notice that my attraction to, to metal and even grindcore and perhaps some other similar genres was not only because I liked the sound of the music. That was absolutely paramount. That was definitely number one. I don't think I would have ever listened to music when I didn't like the sound. But it was also because of a particular enthrallment with the extreme, because this was a genre that was really pushing the boundaries, and it was really trying to just test the limits of humanity, not only musically, I mean, trying to play speed metal as fast as you can, trying to have music that is so heavily distorted, but also the entire theatrics of the whole thing is talking about how 
They're just pushing humanity to the limits in an artistic and creative form. And if you'd like to hear more about this and some of the stuff from Boards of Chaos, we will have an upload in the description box called Satanic in, about influences on the music industry. That'll be available here. We've also done one in the past on some of the Satanic cults of California. I would highly recommend that you guys um, check these out. I would invite you to listen to them. But um, if, as we continue to go on here and look at some of the other things about King Diamond and the connections to not only sa the satanic uh, beliefs, but just the paranormal in general, he said very clearly though, that there are four major paranormal zones in his home. And at one time in night, at night, his wife was just suddenly hit by a cold gust, and it was inexplicable. And she felt as if she had been interrupting something. And when it comes to things like that, I that that I'm a little bit more skeptical. I know it sounds simple, but I find the story of the glass just you know rising up on itself, or raise a, like the glass that is just floating in the air, and three people are watching that. I think that that is simple, but I think that that it's purely perplexing when you have one person being hit by a cold gust of hair or something, and they're like, "Well, what was that?" Um, maybe the wind. I find those things are a little bit, um, a little bit different. But I do love this one quotation from King Diamond that is featured in uh, Kurang, which says, "If there is a hell, and I go there, who cares?" <laughs> I just um like that one, and some of the other things that we say. And I don't mean to get too spiritual right now because I really don't like going down that pathway. But instead, I would say that King Diamond is somebody who has simply said that one of the reasons why he doesn't accept religion is he doesn't believe that anyone has proven or disproven anything. So he just doesn't listen to them, and instead he adopted this satanic as a philosophy. And yes, he talked about Anton LaVey, but as you heard, uh, he is he has been um, practicing this before Anton LaVey. Or he had a very similar belief system, and this was just a way of putting it into words, and perhaps you've had something similar in your life. I've definitely had that in mind, where you believe something, then you learn about someone who thinks something similarly to you, and then you can actually um, articulate it in a particular manner. We're going to jump over to an article from the San Francisco Examiner, Perfect City, to talk about Anton LaVey, and let's read a little bit here. King Diamond, a Danish rocker who subscribes to the late Anton LaVey's School of Satanism, agrees with Shakespeare's warning. There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt in your philosophy. He can't rationalize the passing of his favorite black cat magic. That's the name of the cat at age 18. She was a true soulmate, and it would take nearly an hour to explain the extremely supernatural things that happened the morning she left us, says the heavy metal singer who plays at the Rockstar Energy Mayhem Festival in the Bay Area this weekend. Backing Dreams of Horror, a 23-track best-of collection. He even had a three-ring pendant made in his pet's honor. There's, a, there's power in that necklace. I've had to go to it a couple times, including when I had food poisoning last year to make it through. Next challenge question I would like to ask you guys. Do you believe that um, energy can manifest itself inside a material object or inside something like a necklace or inside a particular heirloom? Something to that effect. In any way, do you believe that energy can be held in that? And by energy, I mean spiritual or some form of paranormal energy. I've never done drugs in my life, he says, and I drink on social occasions only, but I've experienced so much inexplicable stuff. I was lucky that I had parents that had had supernatural experiences, so I could talk to them openly without them looking at me as some type of lunatic. Hey, he, lucky for him. Yeah, my parents thought I was a lunatic when I would talk about that stuff. They thought I was a lunatic when I would talk about anything. Even when I want to uh, say that one of the reasons why I listen to interviews with King Diamond is I have this weird thing where I just like listening to um, discussion programs in Danish. I mean, I do some weird stuff. I like listening to old radio programs, and we discuss them from time to time here on this channel, which is a good reason to subscribe if you're into weird stuff. But also, I just... For some reason, I like the Danish language. I also watch lots of interviews with Lars Ulrich from Metallica, and I have no idea why. I mean, I do like their music, I guess, but um, I just like hearing it in Danish. The musician has strong ties to San Francisco, where after a concert, he visited Anton LaVey at the Church of Satan's headquarters at the Black House on California Street. He was a fan of LaVey's Satanic Bible, a self-empowering manual, and he saw a philosophical, rather than a spiritual, but also sinister, 
response. It doesn't talk about this god or that god as someone you have to do all the kinds of stuff for. It's a way of living, a questioning book, and there's nothing supernatural in it. And that's what I said as well, that um, King Diamond would go down the pathway of something satanic as a philosophy. But what have you, what do you see your response to anything that we've shared about this? Because also including in supernatural and paranormal elements, do you have anything that you would like to say? And um, what are your responses to some of the criticisms that we've made? And as always, please like and subscribe. Until next time.